What's up, ecosystem? Welcome back to ATI Auto Business. It's Friday, noon central time. That means it's time for Cars on the Move, where we are going to talk about car hauling equipment today. We've got a special show. We're live at Midwestern Car Carriers in, uh, I think, near Kansas City. And Ty is there, and we're going to talk with Joe and Randy at Midwestern. And it's time for, okay, what car hauling equipment questions do you have? Whether you're a carrier with experience or a new uh, driver researching or a broker trying to better get to know the equipment out there that's in operation that you're, you know, you're dispatching loads to. Are you a shipper? Are you a consigner? Are you a dealer? Do you work at an auction? What questions do you have? And if you miss the show live, you can join in the conversation in the comments below do that feel free however we can help that's why we're here please do remember to leave a like click share click copy you can grab that youtube link and you can share the show what are we doing here today okay car hauling equipment that's the show today okay we get the questions i'm looking at buying an auto hauler i got a few questions great not only do we do phone calls ty will talk to you but it's time to bring in a live perspective inside the shop as it will so please do help me let's go back to camera one please help me wish a very warm welcome to my co-host and friend he's your friend oh yeah ty thompson hey ty can you see me and hear me okay yeah how are you i'm good man how you doing good just hanging out at the shop midwestern kansas city missouri uh randy and joe been kind enough to let us come in and talk about equipment so there's plenty of equipment if you can't tell right can you tell that i'm in the shop today so i can see that oh, just i just hit a wrong button i can see that you're in the shop um and you know what i lost camera <clears throat> two which is oh, okay boy. yeah we'll we'll, we'll yeah. figure that out but i see that you're in a shop what are you doing there what's going on well, you're right. So we get a lot of phone calls because of the show, because of the channel. We get a tremendous amount of phone calls. Ty, I want to be a car hauler. Okay. Uh, I've got a truck. Okay. Uh, what trailer do I need? What, what truck is better? And uh, so I thought, you know what? We don't, we don't talk about equipment that much. I, I know enough about equipment to have a decent conversation. But Randy, Randy is the man who knows about equipment, right? So before we get really into this, one of the things, if, you, if you're not, if you're watching this, you're trying to figure out how to get into business. Equipment is very important. Don't get me wrong. But the real important part before you go spend any money is business strategy, business plan, market research. And how are you going to pay for this equipment? This isn't cheap. OK. And this isn't just willy nilly fly by the seat of your pants. I got a truck that I don't use. It's sitting in the backyard. I can buy a trailer and I can make ten thousand dollars a week with a load board and a dispatcher, stop, okay? This, this isn't that show, but before you get too excited about spending money, maybe watch this, and maybe you'll learn something about the cost of equipment, the importance of equipment, getting the right equipment, and different things like that. And one of the things that I noticed, this is funny, Jay, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see right behind me here. Whoops, right about here. Okay, can you see yeah, this? yeah. You the remember chains. Tuesday night, yeah, what, one exactly. of our good questions was? I know. <laughs> So if you look right here, right, let's try this. Watch this. This is cool. So this, I've got my camera thing mounted on a trailer, right? Nice. Do you see that? Yeah. What is that? Uh, those are the pooch holes in the That's deck. a strap. Oh, you're looking at the strap. Yeah, well, the strap's on the trailer and the chains are on the... Are the chains still being used then or are they just... No, we don't right. use chains anymore. <laughs> right. There we go. <laughs> Remember what Sue said yesterday on Dispatching Live? Sue knows it. So there are some uh, brokers, dealers, OEMs. You can't haul a car unless you have over-the-tire straps. So that's something you need to think about too, right? Absolutely. Which gets into <clears throat> lasso versus over-the-tire. And then, and then even Brian will talk about where you need to strap to be you know, legal. You can't just... You can't just throw it over the tire and be like, yeah, well, I'm over the tire. Well, there's a little bit more to it. There's a little more. There is. And so that's why we've got Randy. That's why we have Joe. That's why we're at the shop. There are a couple of mechanics floating around here. There's a uh, busy, busy shop, by the way, busy shop. So right now we've got, looks like uh, four 
Midwestern trucks all lined up. They've got, these are what we call stingers, okay? So a stinger is a semi that has the ability to haul three, minimum three mm. cars on the tractor. See, one, two, three. Some of them, depends on which one. This would be a day cab. There's a big difference between a day cab and a sleeper. Uh, I don't know if you can see. And so here, let's do this. While you're talking, I'm going to bring in our friends. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. keep going. That's awesome, man. All right, here we got we got Joe and Jeff and Carlos and Chris. This is the ATI. And again, your if you when when the conversation picks up, um, you can pull in camera two. And camera one, you you are invited to say hello. You don't even have to say anything. Just leave Just a line. Just leave a line. Um, but and then we've got, yeah, check the audio, <clears throat> check the video. <clears throat> Thanks for jumping in the live chat. John is here. John's going for twelve thousand a week. Why not raise the stakes? <laughs> hey, there you, go. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> hey, Chris. Right. Hi, how you doing? Good to see hey, you, buddy. For the first Finally. time. First time ever, Chris Chamberlain, yeah, man. Good to see you. Thanks for no, no, wow. Which, by the way, this this show actually started one night. We were uh, just so everybody knows. I I'm always like, hey, skip the. F-350, 450, 5,500, 500. We'll skip all that. Just go to what I call the beer truck, class four, class six, medium duty. Well, Carlos bought a beer truck, and Carlos, we were doing a show one night, and Carlos, my fuel's mileage is really whack. So this is kind of where it started. We started talking about gear ratio, some things that I really don't know that much about, but I'm getting ready to learn a lot. So the thanks for joining us, Chris. Thanks, Carlos. Thanks. There's Jeff, and there's one in there, Ken, also. <coughs> Yeah, and Randy uh, and Ken Joe. Collins so is with us. Yeah, and we've also got a mix. Jeff, uh, Jeff, why don't you say hello if you get a chance? And Jeff will tell us, you know, just a brief introduction more about Jeff Watt. He's never been on ATI before, also, um, and he's. I think he said his truck's in the shop right now. Oh boy, yeah, Jeff, so where he's you at, buddy? Us. He's here. He's on the oh, phone with the mechanic. Is. Oh. He is on the phone with me. I saw your groceries. Oh, oh good. Oh, well. I like the mechanic story better. Go with that. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, what, who are you and what do you do and how did you get here? Um, I'm just a driver. I'm just one of the – I've been in the industry since 1992. Started as a private driver for a wholesaler uh, running out of Mannheim, PA. And – Remember Mr. Larry when he had one truck. Um, like I said, I remember when Randall started his business. And I went with one of the bigger companies twice. And I've always gone back to working for the little guy. Well, he's ended up back at the little guy, huh? Well, that's interesting. Seems happier that way. <laughs> it's more rewarding when your boss gets up and does the same thing you do. He's out there in the snow. He's out there in the cold with you and makes you want to work a little harder. Well, that's good. Well, thanks for joining us, Jeff. That is awesome. That is awesome. And your good truck job. is in the shop. Is that right? Yep. I'm getting a clutch put in it. Let me, what kind let of truck do you run, Jeff? Uh, 17, 389 Peterbilt, quick loader. Is that uh, the cut trail? Quick loader? Yeah. Strap, okay. strap, trail, 75 footer. Strap. So you're a stinger guy. You're yes. what we would call the super trucker, like that little reverb. Well, Bro, start, reverb. I started with tow trucks, to be honest. Hey, that, that's where I started too, tow trucks. I was, the, I was the auto club guy at Disneyland driving a Ford Ranger pickup when I was 19 years old. <clears throat> well, I really wow. started at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's go to Chris that's Chamberlain. Awesome. Who are Thanks, you and Jeff. how did you get here? Sorry, oh. Jeff. Yeah. No, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, Chris. You guys know I'm basically in the mechanic space. Been a tech my whole life. Um, Mannheim, PA for 15, or Mannheim, New Jersey for 15 years. And then I had a position in CarMax open up. So I've been there. Well, right after the COVID and everything broke, I seen all the trailers, little wedge guy, stuff like that stuff coming in and out a lot. And I said, hey, that looks good. I might look into that. So you start Googling stuff. The next thing you know, your YouTube shows up. And, you know, I'm smart enough to weed through the knuckleheads, i.e., you know, all the guys that are on there saying I'm making 10000 a week, whatever. You don't see them anymore. 
but you guys had information and you brought people on like Joe and the rest of the guys that, you know, they're solid, they're doing business, right? And really not wasting their time doing a YouTube show more so than once in a while. You know, yeah. that's, that's somebody that's bringing some good information. So I had a friend who just turned around and said, hey, I got a couple of trailers, I'm going to flatbeds, do you want them? They're a couple of years old, even to me for like 10 grand. It was a take three, 48 footer and a 35 foot Anderson. So for that cost, why not buy them? You know, and then I also knew at the same time that this could be a flash because everything's coming back. So I kind of parked everything. I just been watching and point being is don't do the wrong thing. You know, I eat getting a 3,500 and stuff like that. Now I do have a 3,500, but that's more of my personal truck. Sure. You can do the business with this, but you might want to look at something different. So over time, I really started digging into it and the beer truck was a great idea. But then once I started learning more about, you know, the performance, engine sizes, gear ratios, and then going for my CDL. Now I learned a whole different thing about the trucking industry and trucks and how they operate. So that's kind of what brought me to where I'm at now. And then listening back and forth. And then I spent about 45 minutes with a guy from Freightliner and realized that the M2, they come in various stages and they're more of a utility kind of truck. So they're actually, he said, heavier chassis than a Cascadia. So in the end, after I'm done with you guys, I'm going down to look at a Cascadia. You know, just a single axle, use what I got now. And then after talking to John yesterday, I'm like, wow, man, I could put the two car on the back of a flatbed. So now I got a three car because these days with all the all wheel drive cars, you can't really wheel lift anything without destroying, hurting it, transfer things. But uh, again, I ended up here just by following you guys and weeded out the, rest of the knuckleheads, and here we are today. So wow, thanks nice for coming, Chris. Yeah, thank you, Chris. So, great story. <clears throat> yeah, and we'll get into what Chris was talking about here in a minute: gear ratios and motors and stuff like that, because it is important. And I'm I'm actually learning something too. So Chris is here to teach teach me for sure. Uh, Carlos. Hi. Carlos Braxton. Carlos, Carlos Braxton. <laughs> Here he is. Logistics in the house. That's me. How we all? Good. Good. So you, uh, what you ABC Logistics? You've got ACB. a CB. What do you HCB? What do you have? You got the M <laughs> two. Yes, I do. In a and five, an Infinity five car. Infinity five car. Okay. Yes. You like the Infinity? Love the trailer. Hate the truck. <laughs> oh man <laughs> don't tell everybody on the show you bought that truck because ty kept saying buy a beer truck please don't say that no mine's not a beer truck actually mine is, was a bucket truck believe it or not oh wow bucket truck yeah. okay did you have to take the bed off no it was already i bought it as a cabin chassis i did the setup myself put the fifth wheel on the fenders and the auxiliary tanks and the boxes does yours have a uh sleeper extended cabin yes Okay, so you can take a nap back there if you need to. Right. That part you like. So what don't you like about the truck? It's geared wrong. Um, it doesn't have enough power. Okay. And Not it enough power it. geared wrong. Right. And is it still stuck in the fuel? Yes. Now, this is interesting because you came from a what? Was it a 5500 or a right. uh, 5500 Dodge? Yeah. Yes. So you came, did you have the same trailer on the Yes. The Infinity Five car on your, and do you like your Dodge better now? No. No. Okay. You're just not. Not big enough for the weight. That trailer is made for the Dodges and stuff like that, but it didn't handle the weight right. Is is too much trailer for that truck? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. See, that's kind of what I've been saying for a while. It's kind of scary, especially when you see the one ton with the Kaufman Six car. Have you seen that? Yeah. Down the road? Yeah, I see them every day <laughs> out here. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's crazy. Okay, Carlos, uh, Jay, I can't see. Who else do we have? Ken? All right. So, right? yeah, Ken is on audio. Ken, do you want to say hello? How are you guys doing? How are you, Ty? Good. Hey, Jay. Hey, Ken. Hey. hey what Ken. do you do? How did you get here? Uh, I've been in the business for over 25 years. Uh, a lot of it on the administrative side, uh, customer-facing sales, quality. Um, stumble across your show on the way to a client over time. Hmm. And uh, I, I was listening to you guys as I was driving, and I figured, you know, th this is a great show to learn. Um, 
So I'm hoping that somewhere along the way, my experience can help you guys out in conversation. Uh, and yeah. if not, you know, I'm going to learn from you. So <laughs> that'd be good. Awesome. So now, and let me see if I understand. You don't actually drive a truck, is that right? I do not know. Uh, okay, for good. this well, call, let's... for this call, a lot of what I'm going to be looking for is uh, how does maintenance affects quality, uh, delivery just... quality on cars, uh, damage prevention, etc. And a lot of this actually does fall into that wheelhouse. Wow. Okay. So what do you currently do? Right now, I'm a consultant for a software developer, uh, okay. auto logistics software developer. Uh, I'm not here oh. to sell them. Uh, I'm sure that along the way, we'll all learn about that. Okay, great. All right. Well, that's awesome. But, Thanks you know, for joining. Yeah, and I want to say this is that I think that's one of the things about when you hear about car hauling equipment. I know when I'm on Facebook, I mean, it's intimidating because it seems like everybody knows the equipment except for me. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, I, I like to see others, you know, jump in and be like, you know, rather than say, I'm new here, I just started a business. I haven't started a business or anything, but I want to learn more. So I, I really like that. So I'm here to learn. Then we've got last but least, we've got Joe Bakari and Randy. Joe I think Bacari's they're in the same us. room. Joe Hello, Bakari, Joe. Midwestern. Yeah. How you doing? Hey, Joe. I apologize. I'm, I'm kind of, looking over this way and the camera's over here and it's that's we, so that way you can hear my esteemed colleague we, Randy. we know we've sat across from you and you are you are obsessed with your computer because <laughs> you know so much about business and it's amazing so thank you for taking the time thanks for yeah. having me thanks guys midwestern car carriers you guys have uh mostly stingers i think all stingers is that all right stingers. joe all stingers. All, st all stingers, all Cottrell. It's a mix all between, stingers. Mixed between quick loader and high rail. We're about 90% quick loader right now and about 75% 80 foot. 75% 80 foot? Mm -hmm. For anybody that's maybe new to the game, what that 80 foot's an important number for because that, that just recently changed, what, in the last five years maybe or less? Yeah, 2018 was the legislation. So the 2019 models. Uh, started coming coming out at 80 foot to meet the legislation. Uh, the previously we were limited to 75 feet long from front bumper to the light box on the tail, uh, with uh, I think it was two feet overhang on the front and three feet off the back, uh, or three it was three feet off the front, and four in the back. I, it's been so long now I've forgotten. And I think we got a foot on either end, so we're four and five now and uh, 80 foot long. Yeah, so we we go, we are almost a hundred foot structure by the time it's all said and done. When you when you're done loading and all that. Oh yeah, I'm trying to give them an idea. I don't know if I can give you the right idea, but I'm at the back of the trailer now, right? Yeah, look, look down. You see the, light, the the box with the lights in it. Yeah. That's where the tape measure ends. That's where the tape measure ends. So from and that, here. That deck on the tail there that you see. If you kind of yeah. slide to the right, that deck to the uh, there, that that deck actually will slide out another couple feet. Yeah. The reason for that is what you'll you'll set your tires on in between Back where here. those hinges are, throw your strap over the top of the tire, and then that strap goes over. Could uh, well what Put happens? Tire is here, it, right? Yeah, it'll it'll come it'll come under. Uh, there's like a you set your you set your hook into one of those those little uh, uh, trunnion holes there, and then it throws over the tire, and then it matches on the back end of the deck. There's another flap that you can latch it to, and then from from there, that allows you to keep the tire on the deck, and then the deck can slide and articulate so that that way you can you can get the spacing that you need. All right. So from here to way up there is 80 foot. Is that okay. right? Yep. 80 feet and then you got overhang on the back and overhang on the front now this is cool here too because this you're talking about sliding that back deck out right mm -hmm. this it's, is it's, what you call slides, what do you call this uh that's the valve bank valve bank okay and these are the things you can pull all right push and pull yep that move the deck back in and this goes up everything goes up right so that's it okay Cool. Yeah. Keep going. So I'm the, sorry. I the, the deck will the deck on that particular truck. The deck will articulate back and forth, and it will tilt like so. And oh, this one will. Yes. 
Oh, wow. and, and the reason it does that is so that that way the uh, that way when you're uh, adjusting for like a car that has low ground clearance where you need the bumper to be up on the top pump, you, you'll be okay. able to articulate it without tearing off a bumper or a running board or something like that. Wow, that's cool. That is nice. And that truck package, uh, describe the truck package real quick. So it's 80 foot long. We get right. the extra overhang. What's the difference between just a normal tractor, car hauler, and a truck package? Um, if you, okay, stop where you are and turn to, the, to your left. And you can see there, this might not be the best truck to look at this, but there might be another one in the background that's in a better position. But if you see where, where on the left-hand side of the frame of your camera, up on t on the top deck, uh, you can actually sort of kind of see that there is a sliding ramp there. It slides out. There you have it, right there. Yeah, yeah. And what that what that does is when when you have a pickup truck in the in the the uh, the bottom of that deck, those ramps will slide out and allow you to cradle the deck around the cab of the truck on the bottom, which will allow you to reduce the height on an irregular right. shaped object like a pickup truck so that wow. they get lower than the bridges that you're going to be going under. Yes, and then behind behind that area there, uh, yeah. you flip around the other direction. So the front okay. wheels would be on those black pads that you just looked at. And then oh, in the right direction right there, you can see where that, where, the, uh, where that deck is. There's a pocket that drops down so basically what you're doing is you're dropping one set of wheels inside the pockets, which then they, they sort of, they sort of, um, again, the camera sort of angle down like so. And then the other set will sit on the end of those flippers in the back. Then those things slide out, which allows you to get the, the unit on the top as low as possible. And then when those ramps slide out, it cradles the deck down around the cab of the pickup truck on the tail which allows you to minimize or maximize, minimize your height, maximize your usage, whichever way you want to look at it. Wow. Cradles around the cab. See, below like, here's it. what, wow. here's what we're trying to say. So there's a car right here. I'm down on the bottom. I don't know if you can tell, but what he's saying is, is you put this car. So you, the way you load, you always load the top first, right? <clears throat> yes. Once you get your truck parked over here, the tires are back there on the back and the tires are back here on the front. You pull this out. You push it out. There's a truck or push it out, right? Out of the way. Then whatever's below this, this is not in the way anymore, right? right? So you can drop it down another what? How many inches Six approximately? Inches. So Six to eight? If, if, you look, yeah. if you look down over at uh, behind where you are right now, you see there's a little flap there on the top of the above where the tandems are. There's a black steel flap. Yeah, right here. That thing folds. That thing folds inboard, yeah. and then the, the tires on that, on the truck on the tail, will sit inside of that little pocket. And then yeah. that allows the cab. That's the spot where the cab would be would end up being right here, right there, and then yeah. it drops down. So what you're doing is. So in, in car hauling is a game of inches. Anybody that's ever put it on the <laughs> will know that. And and a matter of inches is a big, big deal. And so what happens is we pick up three, maybe four inches on the bottom deck and pick up three, maybe four inches on the top deck, depending on how we tie down and depending on the size of the, of the freight and all that other stuff. So Which is really crazy. I mean, like, this is important. Yeah, well, in this environment with as many larger vehicles and heavy vehicles and the market is moving towards, uh, you know, EVs and, and pickup trucks and all that other stuff. Number one, the, the equipment has to be light enough to be able to accommodate a full on a full truck load. And number two, you want to be able to maximize your height and maximize your spacing, because if you are if you, you know, just cram everything down or if you tie down with uh, with, you know, with with tire straps, the vehicles can kind of bounce around and, and and float as you ride. Well, then you could potentially create damages, which can turn a profitable load into a loss in an absolute hurry. <laughs> Real fast, not even funny. Yeah. Okay. Well, is there anything else you want to show us on this trailer? <laughs> 
Uh, you know, a lot of the a lot of the features on these trucks, and I mean, obviously, you can see we we we're a hundred percent strap fleet. Um, so we we run straps. Every single piece of equipment we have runs straps. I guess it was probably what do you think, Randy? Two thousand eight or so when the industry really started to shift from chains to straps, and we would start to see a lot of the trucks just sort of evolve over in that way. Now you, there are certain manufacturers you flat out cannot use chains. They don't want hard tie on any on on some of their products. You know, there used to be uh, hook holes in various places on the frames that you would tie to that were specially reinforced to be able to deal with the stresses of, of a hard tie. You know, so we, we have straps. Now, we do have some trucks that keep that we keep chains with. And that has to do there. You know, there are always exceptions to every rule when you're running chassis cabs and things like that. They still do have those chain holes and in order to be able to accommodate height. Then we will uh, we will sometimes you know we'll, we'll manually attach it, it's basically it's called a, a grab hook attach chain on a pelican hook and then the grab hook to the to the cluster and then that's how we tie it down. If you come to the outside of the truck, I want to show you one other thing. I, I think this truck has them. If it doesn't, again, I'm sure there's one in there that does. Head over to one of the ratchets. There's okay. one seat right yeah. behind. Yeah. Uh, Is this one okay? Up, up or down? Sure. And uh, try and, uh, you know, wherever is a good position for you. That doesn't have it. Okay. We'll need another truck to find. Well, a lot of our trucks now have what's called quick spins. Oh yeah. Those are cool. And they're dynamite. You basically, see a quick spin. The quick spins are cool because you'll see, it'll say quick spins yeah. on the side of the trailer if it has one. And, uh, I couldn't see the, the number, so I couldn't that tell you about it, but. The uh, no, these are the dynamite them. because they basically turn the ratcheting process or turn the tie down project like a racket ratchet wrench. So you can. I found one. Yep. Yeah. Isn't so, that crazy? Yeah, did one. you hear it? Look, I can spin it both ways. Yeah, you're going to over tighten your strap. If you're not careful there. Yeah, I just did. You Good might job, need to. Ty. That's how you unloose it. See this right here? Can you guys see that? Yeah. That's called a dog or grab hook. The dog. Yeah. But what what we usually do with them is those. That's called a quick release as well. Okay. If you if you point your camera straight down. Straight down, like this way down. Yeah, you can sort of see. There's a hole right in front of that in front of that dog. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Right there. Hook. What you do is you place your tie down bar in a vertical position inside of that, and then you pop it in towards it. the trailer. Bam. And what that does is it releases the strap tension like that. And the, the benefit of that is it, you know, previously in old timey car haul guys and something back with when I started, in order for you to release the hook, you had to literally hold the tie down bar with one hand and then articulate that teeny little hook with your other. So, you know, most many car haulers didn't have thumbnails because of that process. So that's all changed. Yeah, that's this that's what we call tie down. We don't we don't no, use that. I know. <laughs> I just want to give them the the idea though. This is a this is not a good tie down bar. But no, that we want was... to see that what you're talking about because you're right. And I remember when we used to have chains, you had to literally put your finger right in here. Can you see that? So you put this in here like that. Yep. Can you see it? And then pop it in. And you pop it like that. And it releases. There you it. go. Now, now, just so you know, uh, uh, Ty, the reason why that bar is bent up like that is because a driver challenged Randy to a test of strength. Oh. Randy won. <laughs> One thing you don't do is hit Randy with a tie down bar because it's going to come back <laughs> and look like this. No, Rand, Rand, Randy was flexing his muscles and did. Uh, he oh, he just down. bent it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, nice. Now, there was one other thing. I'm going to put this back in. I, we'll get to the smaller trailers and gear ratios and stuff like that here in a minute. But Randy was showing me something that I wish I had when I have my trucks. This is amazing here. Look at this. Can you see this? Oh, these are cool. Yeah. Tell us about these, Randy, Joe. Randy, it's yours. Uh, those are halos. They're called halos. And that's a tire inflation system for the tractors. And those work like a centrifugal force uh, air pump that you can set whatever pressure you want on your tires and the halos will activate as, as it's like a kind of like an airplane engine that have <clears throat> opposing pistons and uh, 
they pump air into the tires and <clears throat> up to whatever uh, pressure you have it set for. And the benefit of this is that if a tire, uh, it prevents the tires from running flat, which then in turn will reduce the opportunity for, you know, for flat spots, potential, you know, ca catastrophic damage of tire fires and things like that. You do them on uh, trailers too, also? No, the trailers have the in-track system, which is uh, aired up through the through the axles on the trailer from the air compressor okay. truck. Right. You, Same you, truck. Can you see that? Yeah. So, if you if you kind of go up between the tandems by where you had that flap, where you were playing with that flap, you'll see the air tanks right there. They're they're aluminum. Can't miss them. So that's part of the air the air up process for the trailer. When the trailer is riding on the highway. It, it blows air into the airbags, those airbags inflate, and then that whole air pump process, it's all linked together. Wow. That's a lot of stuff all working together to make things better. Our hauling and is I a complicated it. mess. Yeah, when I used to have my, my tra the trailer, the Cottrell trailer tires, I always had a problem. They would get these little things. You guys don't even have that problem. So good job. I don't know how you figured it out. You remember what I'm talking about, Randy, when they all used to have that weird cupping yeah there's uh <clears throat> there's a couple trailers i have still do that and we're we're working on that remedy but um for the most part we don't really have much trouble with trailer tires wow that's good <laughs> well and that the benefit of those that halo thing i i mean talk about money saver wow fact, it's hard to get uh, people to huh we run a lot of recaps on trailers too it's been that it's been that uh effective that we're able to run recaps. Wow, but, really? <laughs> which saves a lot of money. That does. That's huge. Take, that's take that times a hundred truck fleet, you know, that's real serious savings. Big. And we why do we need that? Because sometimes the drivers forget to check the air. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It happens. <laughs> the, the majority of tire failures on a recap tires lack of inflation. So if you keep the tire inflated, it, it minimizes your tire loss. Mm-hmm. Big. Okay. Um, so this is primarily Stinger World. I was telling them the difference between day cab and sleeper. You guys want to touch on the difference between a day cab and a sleeper? Yeah, What's why don't you jump in, you, you can kind of jump between the trailer and the tractor behind you there. It yeah. looks like we've got a sleeper Volvo right there and a day cab right right next to you. So there's your day yes, cab. Here's a day cab. Right. Yep. See that. And what's the go ahead. So so you can kind of see. All right. There you go. Perfect. So you can kind of see there's a big old bunk there. And uh, obviously the sleeper in, in some trucks have modular sleepers. Some trucks are integrated and, you know, just goes by brand and manufacturer and model and things like that. Um, but that that Volvo with the sleeper, the benefit, obviously, is it's a sleeper. The trade off is that. Uh, that you have less decking behind the cab, and and you're missing a deck up on top. Yeah, less on than top. Deck. Well, so yeah, the day so the day cab, there there is also a weight difference between the two trucks. So you can see that there's a deck there, a little we call it sometimes a pup deck, uh, where where that day uh, the the uh, sleeper would be. And the benefit of that is in certain load configurations, you can sort of straddle the tires of the vehicle on the head rack over the cab to get your height down. It's a little bit more difficult to do with the sleeper, but with the sleeper, you in theory never need a hotel because you're carrying, you know, your bed and, and your, 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 uh, your bedroom with you. So how does that work? If you get a, if you have a driver that is driving the day cab and he doesn't make it back or whatever he's doing, how does that work? What happens then? Hotel. Hotel. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it's the use case is different for each. I mean, like uh, when you're driving long haul over the road, the sleeper is a big benefit because, you know, you you you're not limited to, you know, oh, I can't find a hotel for the next 50 miles. You know, you you can as long as you find a place to park that's legal and, you know, the, and all that, then then you basically can bed down and sometimes you can maximize your time by doing so. Um, with the day cab, you have a certain degree of versatility that you gain in uh, what you can load up above and what you can load behind the cab. So, uh, you know, it, it's all trade-offs. You know, you have a finite amount of space to work with within those those 80 feet. 
uh, you can fit longer vehicles and sometimes uh, sometimes actually stumpier vehicles. When I say stumpier, I mean, you know, oddly shaped vehicles are better behind the cab of a day cab because you don't, you know, because you can kind of position them in a different way or you can move that deck above it in a different way to be able to get around the odd, odd angles and strange corners. But again, I always like this spot for the Lincoln Town Car right here. That's with the no sleeper. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Remember the old Lincoln one. Town Car? It was definitely from there to here. Oh, uh, yeah. Sucker was always long. What do you put down here now? F 150s? No, you don't put a 50, 150 down there, but just about any car, Chargers, Challengers. Uh, uh, we, we ship a lot of Hyundai and Kia. Uh, we put cars back there behind uh, uh, the 100 k we can fit Cherokees. We can fit, um, you know, medium and small SUVs. You know, the, the thing about loading is, and, you know, without getting to, I mean, car haul loading on a, on a Stinger could be its own show. But, you know, what you fit on the head rack and what you fit on number two and what you can fit behind the cab, each of those things influences what can go behind it. You know, you're loading backwards, you know, and, and each, yeah. each decision you make is a consequence for the vehicle that's behind it or below. So yeah. you know, that that's that's kind of the trade-off. Okay. So sometimes this starts with uh some to get to this, not necessarily you have to load a three car. Like you can take a guy who maybe knows how to drive or wants to learn how to drive and you can teach him how to load these things. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Related experience is very helpful if you've loaded uh high mounts and stuff like that. You know, the the key is if you can keep it between the rails going up, then you should be able to keep it between the rails onto the head rack. Ah, yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, uh, and I'm going to pause for just a second, and we've got a bunch of guests. I, I don't know if anybody wants a question. Now is a good time to ask questions while we got Randy and Joe. Well, my question would be, is you guys got to figure it out with the roads and where you go. So when you go and get a truck, you obviously, they help you spec it with the engine, obviously for power and load and gear ratios. Is that correct? Well, that, <laughs> it, it, it's, that's go ahead, a, Randy. <laughs> it depends on who you're sourcing your equipment from. Right. Uh, there right. are specific specs that you can get that kind of a generic car hauler if you're looking for something like that. Um, we seldom ever go with the generic specs, but what we do is accept the generic specs and then we'll tweak it from there. Like, you know, we don't want this brand of tire. We want this brand of tire. We want a different air dryer than what they're, they're offering or, you know, or sometimes we go with disc brakes instead of drum brakes. I mean, there's just, there's just a lot of different uh, a different variables there. Gear ratio is another one. You know those those sleeper Volvo's there. I I spec those with a 2.79 gear ratio, hoping that I would pick up some fuel mileage. Um, really didn't make that big a difference uh, um, because they wind up the engines wound up at the low end of the power curve. So a little higher gear ratio would have been a better choice because you get in about the middle of the power curve instead of on the low end. So there's just a lot of different things that, that you want to really research and and uh, go from there. I mean, there's, like I say, a lot of it's personal preference, a lot of it's necessity. Okay. Yeah, so in other words, it's you've been doing it long enough so you know, yes, you can go to Freightline or whomever, and say, hey, this is what I want, but then you know how to trim it down to what you need. Right. Yeah. Well, in your your everyday Freightliner dealer, they're probably not going to have a spec for a car hauler. Um, and they don't. They they didn't actually. Right. They were they could give well, me dry van stuff, but yeah. after that, then it, it would fall on what little. It's all Greek to them after that. So right. Um, we we deal with uh, I don't know three or four different truck dealers that that deal primarily with car haulers okay. and you know then we can go from there now the Cottrell if you're ordering from Cottrell there's kind of a there's a lot of options there too and what you what you can get from them and and that's that pretty much uh predicates on what your needs are you know if you haul a lot of trucks you're going to want certain things if you don't haul trucks you haul mostly cars then you're going to want different things so 
Um, you know, it just depends on what your personal need is. And where you're going matters too. Where are you going? Exactly. Because uh, delivering, you know, out into the Western states where the speed limit, where there's nothing low in terms of bridges and, you know, you're, you're going to be, uh, you know, driving 75 miles an hour or whatever the speed limit is out there is very, very different than hustling off two loads a day from, you know, Baltimore or Newark or, or a very congested area like that. Exactly. And that, that happens to be my area. I'm right in New Jersey. So I'm hills, no hills, stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. you got to kind of factor that in as well. You're not yeah. highway gearing it. I, I could tell from your accent that you that you and I are from a similar place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I grew up in Essex County, up in North Jersey. So that's I'm down South Jersey now, but that's where I come from. <laughs> yep. I know Essex County well. I worked in Port Newark for many years. Did so, you? so yeah, the the uh, that the, the differences there are also really important. And and two, you know, obviously, you know, things like the the height of your cab. I mean, if you're never going to be servicing Long Island or going on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, yeah. where you're forced to be 13 feet six inches, then that you know that's one one consideration that might make a a difference to what you purchase. If you're going to be running the West Coast and you know, or a lot of desert loads, then you might want a truck that's going to have a, a larger sleeper because you're going to be spending a lot of time in it. So it's all always trade-offs, like everything else in life. It's all trade-offs. That's a fact. Well, I did speak <laughs> to Ron from NYC because I know he does New York. Yep. And I actually used to run a five car back in the day. This is going back in the 80s. I was absolutely clueless. And we were pulling Lincolns and taking them up to the Hatboro auction mm -hmm. in PA. I'm driving in and out of the Lincoln Tunnel, not considering height. Luckily, I never knocked the car off the top or hit anything. <laughs> But, you know, now that I'm really getting into it, I'm learning a lot. And the best thing you can do if you are going to haul cars, don't go non-CDL. Get a CDL, get education so you know what you're doing. Yeah. Especially when it comes to the truck and stuff like that. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem. I, I would echo that. And and take advantage of the resources that are out there on this channel. And, and there's others out there, too, because... There are a lot of people that get into yeah. this business kind of blind and then costs just hit them from complete by, by surprise. Yep. And, you know, that 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 can career end very quickly. You know, we were talking right. before about claims and how that can go from zero to a lot in a hurry. And, you know, if you have a claim every load, you're in, you know, that that'll that'll add up. That'll pile up. It's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Aside from paying out, now your insurance gets jacked. And now where are you? Yeah. yeah it's, <clears> Chris, you keep. Talking about you learned something when you went to CDL school. What did you learn? Well, pretty much how the trucks operate. You know, you're braking. Uh, you know, like I could drive my single car trailer, but then I learned the uh, drive straight, turn late, you know, so I'm not dragging things across the curb, so to speak, uh, where the engines run. Um, I did manual because just in case I ever did a manual. Mm -hmm. um, and you just start lifting it learning your shift points, speed, engine RPM, when what gears you're supposed to be in, you know, uh, 45, add four and not in five together, it's nine. You know what I mean? Basics. But it, that's what it comes down to, the basics. If you have no base, I can't be the mechanic I am today without learning the basics. Yeah. And, then, and then training. I, I mean, spent a lot of years in Tarrytown, New York for GM training. Yep. And stuff like that. Nissan, summer, but you know, pick one of the schools. I was there, you know, now if this is where I'm going next, I got to learn here. So that's why I've been with you guys for as long as I have and just went straight for a CEO. Wow. Hey, Joe, that's good. Mm -hmm. I got a question for Joe. Sure. Uh, when you load the top, the first car on the top of the deck or above the cab, mm -hmm. do you pull it on or you back it on? Depends. If, if it's a mock Mustang, mock whatever, Mustang EV, Joe? Yes, it must be you driven. Back that one. <laughs> it must be driven. And that's because the manufacturer mandates that. Head over to the head rack there, uh, Ty. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on it. So I was asking because I saw a guy, he loaded the car, he pulled it on forward, mm -hmm. but he couldn't get it off because it was kept spinning. He couldn't get the thing off the trailer. Yep. Keep going. I'll show you why that happened. I know why. Hold on just a second here. Don't, hurry. don't do this at home, yeah. kids. Yeah. I signed a waiver. Don't worry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, you see those? You see those those those, those pockets there? Yeah, that's where the car dropped down in. Yep, the, the tires drop down inside of those pockets. Okay, now I want you to get uh, get down real close to the to those trunnions on the other side. Nope, not them. That right oh, side. Sure. You see? You see how the paint's wore off? Yeah, because slides in yeah. and out. That's a tire spinning right there. <laughs> that's why that's that happened. Weird. When you get, it's slippery. If, the, if the driver had those pockets opened up too deep, then the force of the car, especially when it's wet, can't overcome the the the, the pull of getting out of those pockets. Oh, okay. So the reason why that happened was because the driver had those pockets open too far. That that whole post there, that that whole U-shaped post, will slide in to reduce the size of those pockets so that the vehicle will not be stuck too deep inside of them. Yeah, see this right here? Yep. And there's another, that. Thing, there's another thing, too. If you take a step back there, I think this track, I thought I saw it when we came over. Yeah. There's a, there's also a little flap that comes over that you can drop inside of those pockets. on. Oh, some yeah, car. yeah. That right there. So now what happens is that fills the hole inside that pocket and creates a traction point. For the trip for the tire so what you can do is that that do the opposite you slide open that that front pocket even further so that that way that thing kind of crane you know hook cranes down yeah that's so a traction point for the tire a ramp for the tire to be able to pull up out of there or it right it can ride like that in certain applications that's the right way to do it that's Don't not step a step okay. <laughs> that's good so that's, that's a good so question, that's, Carlos. That's the reason why that happened, uh, them, is that they couldn't, the, either the rear wheels didn't, couldn't create enough traction to pull the front wheels out of that spot, or the front wheels, which were providing the traction, didn't have enough meat on the tires touching the steel to be able to push the, uh, the rest of the car off of that position. Now, I'll go ahead and climb back down again. I'll show you another thing. Okay, well, this here, I want to show them this. This is a really cool feature. This is a... Oh, no, this isn't the pup deck. Never mind. Nope. That, yeah, go but, ahead. But you can probably see, if you look to your left or your right, you can probably see the pup deck. Yeah, there's the pup deck over there. We can go over there in a minute. But go ahead. Where do you want me to go now? So if, if you get back to the front of the truck and actually, actually stop right where you're at. Look to okay. the left of that truck. You see how that, you see how that ramp is kicked up on the top of the truck next to you? Yeah, yeah. Over there. Okay. Those decks articulate. Yeah. If you don't that means they're that hydraulic. Up, with the hydraulics and create a ramp for your for your car to get out of, it will get yeah. stuck in that pocket. So the first yeah. thing that when a driver says I can't get the unit off the head rack, the first question I have is, is your number one deck all the way up? Number one, see this is what I love about this. Okay, this right here, that's number one. Sorry, I'm hanging on the side of the truck. So number one, number two, where's number three at Joe? Uh, depends on the truck. Uh, if the number three position, the, or the number one deck, and the number one is always the same because it's always the pusher piston above the above the nose of the tractor. That's number one. But number two. And when you say, sorry, wait. When you say articulate, what you're talking okay. about is this right here, right? That's number one, right? That piston. If number you look one. up, there's a number one somewhere on that post, usually yeah. kind of on the outside edge. Uh, we'll find it. But anyway, this is you're saying pull the pull the lever over there on the other side. And this goes up like this one over here. Yep. So the car will come out without spinning. Right. You create, yeah, you create the a ramp one. going down. There's your number one. Yeah. So number one, lift that up and you can get out. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Some guys, what they do is they just have these preset. This right here, this is your pin, right? And they yeah, usually, okay. like, they can go up, but when they bring it down, that's where they just leave it. Yeah, if you take right? a look at the pin on the truck behind you, it should be loose enough that you can show how that, that little uh, yeah. object Yeah, these are cool, too. So this is safety. See that? Right. You, have you guys seen this up close, anybody? See that? But, but you should also see, like, a chalk mark on them, too, for where, like, your unloading spots are so you're not always searching for the pinhole. Right. There's a pinhole well, there, they, and then there's usually a, like a divot hole that looks like a like the tip of a drill bit. It's not always on the number yeah. one position because there's because that is a relatively low movement deck. But uh, in the in the rear positions and especially on the trailers, 
you know, when the, yeah. it might be hard to see with some of those trailers because the, the they're, you know, most of the pit post is in the sleeve. There you go. This is a marker. So you go, I think it used to be 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. And then there's another one. See? Yep. So this, from this dot to this dot, 10 holes. And that's important to know. It seems silly, but <laughs> why is that important, Randy? Well, you want your ramps to all be level when you're done loading. So uh, you don't crush one side of a car and not the other. Yeah. Or, you know, this goes to the comment about quality. If your deck is not level, then uh, if you have a failure on your securement, then the vehicle can move, which would be Ooh, terrible. Yeah. You don't want that. Look at this little secret. Pike sticks. Oh, yeah, that was. Yep. Height yeah. stick height, and straps. Height sticks down on the tail, though, and that's usually hard when somebody parks next to you, but... As far as those the dots on the ten holes, when we were running team, it uh we we could load eight explorers out of St. Louis in like forty five minutes because it was, you know, three holes from the dot, yep. three holes above the dot, three holes below the dot, right. and and it it really you know it helped. Another manufacturer didn't have those dots on his trailer, if I remember right. Yeah. So, they, they they have they have different hash marks. Sometimes you sometimes driver would drivers would put chalk lines and things. There you go. There's one of those divots I mentioned. Yeah, and you know they, they, there's there's some version or another. There's a few you know of of that you know for reference. When you're doing what you're talking about, where you had eight explorers, um, you know we typically with those similar product lines, similar you know you kind of learn where your ramps have to be set. You kind of learn where your straps or chains have to go. And so it makes it easy during the loading process for you to be able to just go over and, you know, set what you need. And I, I know that if I set it this, you know, to this spot, then I'm going to be 13 five because the, the height of this vehicle is never more than X. Right. But always use your height stick. <laughs> yeah. We've, we saw the new one, the uh, the thirteen six load that didn't fit under the eleven foot bridge. <laughs> yeah, we all saw that. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, you know you can't feel you can't feel good about that. Our industry as a whole is harmed when you see that kind of thing, and it, it just hurts to watch. It's a it's a sinking feeling because the driver the it, hopefully the driver learns from it. Yeah. Um, in the normal in the normal world, that driver wouldn't have a job. But you also have to wonder with the amount of damage that was caused to the vehicles, does it become uninsurable mm -hmm. by the carriers to where um, the union can't do anything for the guy to keep his job? It, 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 there's not a good look in any scenario. The manufacturers don't, do, don't like it. The, you know, the, 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 the trucking company surely doesn't like it. And, you know, any driver with a conscience obviously is, uh, is upside down for days too, so. Carlos, you're sitting here watching all this. I'm thinking, have you ever thought about getting a stinger? Uh, no. No? Probably not. It's, this is a good question. The reason I ask, because stingers may not be for everybody, right? You've kind of developed your own, your own program, I guess you'd say, is that right? I guess you could say that, yeah. I wouldn't mind having an eight car though. A high mount eight car? Oh uh, we call that man, a high mount. Not a high mount, no. Not a high mount? What eight car do they make? Um, I can't think of the name. My cousin had that trailer. It the kind of the whole deck kind of collapses all the way down, kind of flat. Yeah. Um, I can't think of the That's name of the, the trailer. Cottrell. Yeah, it's the Cottrell fifty three oh eight, I think, isn't it? I, I can't remember the, what, what brand, which uh, the, okay. the model it is. All right. Does anybody know what this is called? That's a CX-11, Any? isn't it? It's a high rail. I know that. High rail. High rail. A, CX, a CX-11 high rail because it's seven cars on a trailer. Yeah. If they're small One, two, enough, three. you can get eight. You that can might, get two down in the belly. That, that might be a 10. Uh, I'm not sure if it has the flippers over the tandems. Yeah. It looks like it. So see the difference, guys? This is high rail. 
Joe, why do we have high rail? Or why did we have high, high rail? Uh, they, they have a benefit. They have a number of benefits over a quick loader um, in terms of that. Mm -hmm. Number one, they're a lot more forgiving to load because every deck slides. Yeah. Um, they, they have, because you have three positions up top, they can be articulated and manipulated in all kinds of ways that will allow you, uh, it's not really necessarily easier, but when you're dealing with combination loads, a high rail can offer some opportunities to be able to get lower. Um, yeah. However, on more modern, the, the, the trade-off is, again, back to the trade-offs comment, the trade-off is with all that extra steel come, and all those extra pistons comes all a lot of extra weight. And so yeah. your versatility in today's market, as things are getting heavier and heavier and as we're moving closer to heavy batteries and EVs, uh, it, it's becoming a little bit more difficult to, uh, to utilize this type of equipment. Uh, I would not say it's obsolete. That That is not, I would not go that far. I would say that uh, the market has just changed an awful lot, especially in new vehicle deliveries that uh, unless you're hauling a very specific class of product with, you know, light SUVs and cars in, in the mixture, uh, you less and less advantage that you gain with a high rail. Now, that particular high rail, I mean, it, the, the lane that it runs tends to be uh, small cars north and uh, and Jeeps coming south. So it works just fine and makes plenty of money on that traffic lane for for the for the lane that it runs. So, yeah. you know, it, it can still do fine. It can still be a fine piece of equipment. A lot of I've got a question. A lot of what Sorry. we're going to is more towards what you're seeing in the background there. That's a that truck is a, a different a different company that leases spots with us. So. Yeah, I'm trying not to get that company in the That's okay. in the picture here. I already um, saw it. Ah, uh, shoot! I was trying to figure out how often do you load a, a load of ten, Joe? Does that happen very often? Well, actually, space-wise, loading ten is still possible, but weight is really what has been the trouble um, anymore. And actually, can stop stop there and kind of hang a left there. Let's take a look at this. This truck there, I think. Yeah, that's a good one. Head on. Can you uh, get out there without yeah. getting covered in mud? Oh, yeah. So, so this truck has a little bit different. We talked about the pup deck on the, the truck that was in the, the, uh, shop. In the shop. This truck has something else that's another feature, and it it's called a four-car head rack. And what's happening here. Oh, yeah. Spin to the right. And you can, you can kind of see that pup deck is a little bit longer, but it has another feature that's very important, and that is that it articulates out. So said differently, what happens is, I'm uh, trying to do this with my camera, that deck has a slide that does like this, that middle deck. So you can suck uh -huh. it all the way in and, and use it, you know, the same as we would the smaller pup deck, or you can push that deck all the way out with that piston you're pointing at right there. And then that, that goes basically that you can put four, four, small vehicles on the tractor and we call that stacking so one vehicle and then another behind it and then another behind it yeah so you put one right here yep and the bumper is probably right about here yep. the back right? of that deck kicks way forward so it looks like uh, all aerodynamic and then yeah you put a unit this behind deck it right here deck with the full that deck fully articulated and the flippers thrown out and then yeah, you put these another unit behind out. it on the third position right there right with that deck fully yeah. articulated and the flippers thrown out. And that's why you see those crazy football like goalposts back there that, ah, yeah. that is designed to support the weight of the back of a vehicle. <clears throat> then, oh, the yeah. behind, then the unit you back in behind the cab makes your four car head rack. So you can physically load 10 <laughs> in certain applications with the right combination. But the problem is that any more with hybrids and with uh, EVs and, and that, the weight becomes cumbersome. And so, yeah. You know, yeah, I can physically fit it inside of the space that we have, but I run out of pounds to get to the 80,000 pound DOT limit before I'm able to fully load the vehicle. Oh yeah, that's crazy. All right, guys, and we're doing good. Okay. Well, it's because yeah. we were just yesterday, or no, Wednesday, on Live Care Advice talking about the coalition to raise that rate yep. you have anything to add about the coalition and the raising of the rate i hope it happens right 
Are you so guys a part of that? Uh, yeah, we, we work within AHA. Okay. So, so you guys are members of AHA? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> we need to probably talk about I think Jay was talking about having a show about that sometime, bringing all their friends on. Yeah. Be great. Okay. So, especially, uh, so spe yeah. I just want to add this, especially because OIDA, which opposes the coalition, they do pretty good at media. So the pro side might want to add a little bit of media to the <laughs> argument. Well, anyways, that's I, a gentle. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into the politics of yeah. OIDA versus any of the others, but this is an know, equipment they, show. It's a family but, show. Yeah, I, I, all I'll say is that from the standpoint, yeah, family show. Family show. Yeah, Rand, Rand, <laughs> come on, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> all all uh, I'll say about that is that um, you know o, OIDA represents a lot of very small businesses, whereas. Um, you know, com corporation or uh, consortiums like uh, AHA and uh, whatnot, they, they represent, lar you know, s a smaller number of organizations, but tends to be larger fleets. And so there are times and places where our opinions don't overlap. But by and large, trucking as a whole generally has the same priority, which is to try and reduce costs for the overall industry so that that Ooh. way we can on the whole, do a better job for all of us. And I, I think, you know, if you if you frame it through that lens, there's a lot more common ground between those organizations than there is in dispute. Well, I agree, yeah. yeah. So this would be, okay, so you, you we, I can smell the setup of the show. There's a lot to say. Right, Randy? Right. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, okay, take it away. What about any, our, our buddy Ken? Ken, you got any questions? Is any of this intriguing? Something you want to see that you're like, whoa, wait a yeah, minute. Yeah, actually, actually, Ty, I do have a question, and it goes back to the halos. And uh, this this is definitely for Joe and for Randy. Um, uh, Joe, do do all of your trucks have the uh, halo self-inflation system on them? Oh, well, we just bought 10 more. I think there's 10 more trucks that need them, and then, then we'll have everything on the fleet. We'll have halos. Okay. The, the reason I was asking is I'm sure you've seen uh, a, a dropout of tire blowouts, which you know can cause damage to any of the uh, cargo that's on board the truck. But uh, the, the actual reason, um, when you put these halos on, are you going to start tracking uh, your fuel economy to see if there's any improvement with uh, with the tires on the trucks uh, being constantly inflated? I heard you earlier mentioning something about the gear ratios being off slightly. You were hoping for a fuel economy improvement, and uh, I, I was curious. We always track our fuel economy. Uh, I don't know that there's been a noticeable difference with the halos because we have a pretty rigid maintenance program here where the mechanics are checking tire pressure a lot. But um, the uh, the halos have, have all but eliminated uh, run flats and, and blowouts. It's helped a lot. I mean, we still have an occasional blowout. You're gonna have them, but uh, it's minimized it a lot. It's made a huge difference. So uh, the way I look at it, if, if a halo saves one tire, it's paid for itself. So yeah, I can agree with that. Uh, tire is being what four or five hundred bucks a pop. Yeah, uh, you don't have more. downtime. To more. With and, Keep going. Uh, <laughs> Keep more than four or five hundred. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Because they, you know, they 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 come in pairs often or in threes. <laughs> As they say, gotcha. Yeah, keep going. Uh, a lot of the, I, I would say to you know, I, I view things like you know additives like this as as safety components for the drivers as well. You know, the the the, the last thing that a driver wants is to have a blowout happen that are not that you know who knows they may not have seen because it's often a blind spot and the, you know the the inside passenger side tire that they weren't you know maybe they missed it and the next thing you know you got a fire. You know, I, I, I view a lot of that as a, as a safety related issue for the drivers. And I think, you know, the, the safer we can make our equipment, the better. That blue truck in the picture is no longer with us due to a um, major manufacturer steer tire failing with the crew set at 75 miles an hour. Yeah. And it was properly inflated. Um, that led to part of that 
where they actually called all the trucks back in and set them back for a little bit, or we had to change a tire brand. Yeah. Um, it was a good ride. It was a, it was a ride of a lifetime. I never want to take that ride ever again. <laughs> the steer tire is the only tire that I've blown out three times in my career. Wow. Hey, and do- it's always been the passenger side steer tire. Well, I believe that Halo sells uh, a device for the steer tire as well. But th- from my experience, the, a blown steer tire is normally not a low inflation problem. It's, it's uh, the tire's been damaged or it's hit something while you're going down the road. And a lot of times there's stuff on the road you can't see or you're, it goes by too quick for you to see. And that's what causes the, the tire to either deflate and then blow out or just flat blow out. So, Some of the roads, the Michigan roads, the, the bumps and the transitions, they bust, they bust the sidewalls on them. You, you, you'll lose a tire because of, the, of not a pothole, but just of how rough the roads are up here. Well, another thing is that guys don't realize is, is when you're when they're turning or driving around the truck stop and we know the truck stops are full of potholes the edge of a pothole can be sharp enough to cut the sidewall on the tire and i try to train drivers to be very mindful of where they're driving and and if you come to a pothole you know either try to avoid it or hit it head on don't hit it while you're turning because the weak spot on most tires is a sidewall and if that sidewall gets damaged, you're going to have a blowout. Didn't think about that, did you? Wow, that's pretty. Yeah, yeah. I right. can see that coming in real handy in the situation. But what do you? So yeah, I mean, what are your? Do you end up in situations where you're you're really you're going to have a hard time managing that pothole? Well, if you can avoid it, avoid it. You know, I mean, you can't always avoid them, but you can also maybe minimize your turning so to protect the sidewall of the tire or the, the, the edge of the tire. I mean, I've, I've seen some damaged tires come in here that, that still had uh, 130 pounds of air in them, but the, the sidewalls are just jacked up on them. So, so just take them head on. If you can't avoid it, take it head on. Don't that. turn in it. And, a, and not fast. I mean, you, you, right. in the truck stop, you no reason to be driving fast. Right. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna make a comment about the middle pedal is a pretty important component to that equation. Yeah. Right. Don't take them fast. They still have metal or middle pedals. Middle pedal. Well, Say we that have ten times. We we do have thirteen speed uh, trucks out. Uh, trans manual transmission trucks floating around there. So. All right. Okay. Anybody else got any more questions? I was going to say the same. This has really been interesting and informative, but if right. anybody's got anything they want to ask or say. Well, one last thing with the tires, we're leaning on that. You no know, light duty space. We have tire pressure monitors. Do they have that with the big trucks yet or not yet? So you know exactly how much air pressure is in them. He's asking about the, the halo. tire pressure monitors on the, uh, in the cab of the truck. Uh, well, there's devices out there that you can screw on the valve stem that, that sends a signal into the cab. You get a little control box in the cab, and it'll tell you when you have a low tire. But it, we've tried several different ones. Uh, they work on the steer axle fine, but on the drive axle, not so fine because of the, the, the tires are encapsulated with metal all around them. So okay. the problem getting the signal out. So that's why we went to the halos. Okay. And you know that you don't, a driver, if he's checking his tires, he should be able to hear an air leak if he has a tire that's leaking air, okay? And you're gonna have that. You'll have a tire to pick up a nail or a bolt or something and, and the halos right. gonna do everything it can to keep it inflated, but sometimes it, it's not 100% effective. So that's where the driver needs to be bumping his tires a couple times a day that kind of stuff. It doesn't eliminate the driver out of the equation there. Okay. But the halo, you know, I've seen tires come in here with big old nails in them and they, they were up to 120 pounds, of weight, but right. had a big giant nail in them because the, the halo was keeping it up. Now if the truck, if the driver parks for his 36 hour reset, 
sometimes that power will go flat <coughs> because the halo is not able to, you know, to keep it inflated. So uh, that's where a driver is supposed to do a pre-trip, and we know how right. how well drivers do that. But uh, <laughs> well, I, I was actually right about to go there. You know, if I exactly. could just one thing for uh, for for any for any person that is that is running a truck managing a fleet, you know, running a shop. I mean, it's incredible the number of times you can prevent yourself from getting into a real bad spot with a good pre-trip inspection and post-trip inspection. And I'm talking, you know, we, we've had instances where drivers have showed up to our shop and, you know, they're, they're like a gallon and a half light on oil. Like, how do you think that's going to end? <laughs> like, not, not good. good. <laughs> so, you know, um, we uh, we have had instances where drivers, you know, we'll, where drivers will pull into the shop with a shredded tire that, you know, that didn't just happen, you know. And, you know, ha having that good pre-trip and post-trip inspection right. is such a huge preventative and makes such a big difference in the longevity of uh, of that piece of equipment you know you got to you got to look at it this way that truck is the mechanism by which you generate your money that is how you generate your check yeah. with that pe with every moment that that piece of equipment is down you are you're you're going backwards you're losing dollars <laughs> so you know it 15 minutes and it and it seems so so trite but i can't stress enough that 15 minute thing that you do every morning, having the discipline to be able to go through every single one of those points on your checklist, it, it changes so much in terms of the longevity uh, of that asset. And, and therefore, you know, your earning power or revenue power as a, as a fleet owner or as a, as a truck owner or as a driver. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, part of that as a driver too. clarification driver, industry standard joe i believe unless it's changed is drivers are paid straight commission is that still the case yeah every truck's a little every drug company is a little different but in, you know in our case that's basically how it works yes right so when you take a driver and you say here's a three four hundred thousand dollar truck uh be careful and take care of it because this is how you're going to make money <laughs> does that help them understand it all well, we have a, we have a little process here for, uh, we call it the Trinity method. And if drivers, oh. come, drivers come in here with their with low on oil, yeah. then yeah. they get to go see Trinity, our, our shop manager. And okay. We'll make them take a picture of their yes. district every morning the other day. and send it to her. So she's sure. sure that they've checked their oil. Yeah, you don't want to be on the dipstick list. You don't the want to Trinity. <laughs> you're in. The you're in Defcon list. Trinity. Yeah. Uh oh. You want to try to pull the film out of that one? It's Trinity. That's what, we were just talking that's... about you. So, Trinity's okay. Trin Trinity's training wheels. You put this here. Right. <laughs> Turn around. Trinity's train. Now you won't be able to hear everybody, but we were just talking about you. Something happens if somebody comes in here, and they have a low oil out oh, what happens if they have low oil well what do you what do you do they go on my naughty list <laughs> naughty list yeah what's that like um well they get to email me pictures every day of their dipstick oh man <laughs> their dipstick yep. email pictures of the dipstick every day right yeah that's what Okay, now you're Trinity, I'm Ty. <laughs> That's all nice to meet you. Well, it makes sense, right? Yeah. I mean, it happens. Yeah. So what What was, what do, when a guy comes in at, after he's been gone for what, a week, two weeks, how long, what's the average driver stay out here? We have a few drivers that stay out over the road because they choose to. We like to get guys home every, you know, few days or so. Just Much really, as you can. It just depends on how, yeah. how quickly and how hard they But it's up to the driver to make sure that he does a pre-trip. Do yep. you have a list? A pre-trip. Do you give them a list? Yeah, it's on their um, their tablets. It's on so their tablet. They have a Did checklist it? to go over. A checklist. There was a company, Randy, you might know them out west, California. They have all the yellow trucks, but they had figured out a deal 
they put it like a QR code, but it wasn't yep. a QR code on each spot, it. and they had to scan it. Yep, I've even looked into that. Have you? Yes. Have you heard that? That's oh, yeah. amazing, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I've talked Who? to David Floyd about that. Hey, what's his name? David Floyd. David Floyd, yeah. yeah and yeah. that would definitely the driver every time they, get, they can't go until they... Correct. Yeah, and it. it's not like they can just scan and go. It actually calculates a time that you're at that position doing an inspection. <laughs> that's a great wow. idea great. yeah it, and it really so you, you're like man i really hate to throw that on my driver but at the same time i asked my driver to do it and he doesn't do it correct well, and so ty, now he comes in yeah ty put it in consideration and you, and you can you know trinity i'm sure will will add to this you know if we, we do oil samples on, on you know every piece of equipment that we have through here there's some sort of oil sample that we do and if, if, if you're not staying up on your pre-trip and checking your oil, then the, that engine can literally drive itself to destruction in, a, in an extremely short period of time. You know, so we have to, you know, we have to monitor all of that kind of thing. And what's the cost that you can ask Trinity, she'll tell you uh, what was the cost, the most recent cost of an engine in frame that we did. I mean, it's okay. He wants me to ask you, what was the cost of the most recent in frame you did? An in frame, by the way, Joe, describe an in frame for everybody that doesn't know what that is. Expensive. <laughs> well, it's we we completely gut the motor without taking it out of the truck. Is that right? Yep. All yeah. new internals. Right. I'm going to guess. I'm going to stab. Just I'm going to go 27 grand. Okay, wait a minute. Before you do that, uh, Jay, you got to do that thing that you do when you do the Tuesday night quizzes. Where okay, so so everybody go. gets a guess. <laughs> How much is the cost <laughs> of an engine in Tuesday frame? Night. That's Jay. Full cost. Uh, we got A. Tw I said twenty-seven. That was A. B. Who on, Who else wants I to throw I was thinking something number? crazy like fifty. I'll say, I'll say fifty. I'll Jay's say going fifty. Carlos, 35, so we got 27, 50, 35. Uh, Chris, you want to chime in? About 25. Oh, no, because I said 27, and she shook her head. And I, I'll give you another <laughs> chance. One more guess. Jay's at 50. Okay, we'll bump it up right. to 29. It's the price is right. We're standing there. We're listening. What is it? Chris? 29. 29. 29. So we got 27, 29, 35, and 50. Now it's a few and times. The answer Dude. is <laughs> for a total engine in frame cost. Oh, is Randy on? Yeah. How about Randy answer? Rand, does Randy want? Does Randy even want us to talk about this? We better. She's like, hold on. Randy time has out. already time thrown out. all the chairs out the window. <laughs> Randy threw all the. <laughs> Randy threw all the chairs out the window already. <laughs> hold on. Chairs out the window. Okay. Yeah, Randy said okay. He gave us the okay. Between four so and fifty around forty. Seven. Between 40 and 50 Jay. grand. Oh, my God. 37. Jay won that one. Good job, Jay. Oh, that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's yeah. really gone out. That sucks. Is that a Detroit? That's crazy. Cummins? That's Pat Car. Pat Car. Oh, gosh. Pat Car, guys. <clears throat> wow. That's that, nuts. That was that, a new, right? And that's why we check our oil. <laughs> and that's why we check our oil. That's what Joe said. Yes. What else is another uh, something that I don't want to say pet peeve because that's not nice. I know you're a nice person, but really – we do care about our equipment, and it does cost the company a lot of money. And as a res as supposed to be a responsible adult, primarily male, we're just asking you to do yeah, to do pet peeves. peeves. Yeah, I want to hear. Yeah. This. So, pet what would be peeves. one that you're like, mm, you do that again? You told me one earlier today when I was in here. What was do you remember? I don't remember what it was. I don't know. I say a lot. You got a lot of. Well, give me one. Give me your your uh, favorite. Tires. Tires? Yeah. We were just tires. outside talking about tires and the halo. You like the yep. halo? The halos. Helps. It helps. Mm -hmm. I usually, Randy's wanting that on every one of the fleet. Yeah. Every piece of the fleet. I think it's a huge benefit. It I is. See. It's very, very expensive. Uh, um, tires are expensive. Very much. Yeah. Okay. So, Jay, got another trivia. Put all these down for your trivia. The next trivia question, how much oh. is a steer tire today? I'm going to go... How much is a steer tire today? One uh, tire. I'm going to go 750 See, I was going to go like 1100 Jay's going 1100 I'm 750 Chris? Uh, I'm going to go right How much? About 800 800 750 8 Jay's at 11 Carlos? Carlos may, 
get it right? Um, Chris took my answer, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, add some inflation. <laughs> Come on, Carlos. Add some, in- yeah, add some inflation. expensive. Add some inflation. Uh, I was going to check on this because I need some tires for my truck. I think they're about eight, between 750 and 800. So I'm going to say 800. I can't have two 800s. Carlos has 850. 850. <laughs> 750, <laughs> just, 8, just 850, 11. Okay. Trinity, how much is a steer tire? It depends on what brand you're going with, but let's we run Michelin steers. So you're think you're looking roughly around seven fifty or so. Oh, nailed it. All right. That's why Steer Carlos tire. wanted a hundred. Hey, we I have got several a question. Winners. Randy uh, has somebody's got a question. Chris got a question. Go ahead. When Randy was talking about tires and he mentioned brands, so what brand do you really stick with? Is it the Michelin's or we're talking about brands. What's your favorite brand? Michelin. Michelin. Michelin is a better tire. Yes. Okay. And, and they're not cheap. No. 750. It, well, what, what, was, what, what was Jay's cheap and good and good? We had a, we had a guess oh. in the live chat. Thank you, Poe. That's yeah. awesome, man. No. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You can't have cheap. You can't. Yeah. Cheap, fast, and good. You can't have all three. You can't, you can't have all of them. Well, you can't have you all sub loads on Central Dispatch, mm-hmm. you can. I just look at the cost of the Halo system, and it's actually worth buying the Halo system to save your tires, right? Yeah, yeah, right. it'd be worth it. I think so. Carlos has a class four, class six Freightliner M2. With yeah, class six. Five, class six, five car uh, Infinity. Yes. Five car Infinity. That's Carlos. He's like one of our core guys. He's been here forever. Yeah. Like he follows us on every show. And then Chris is the other guy. He worked. He's a mechanic at Carmax. We've got some guy, Ken, in here, and then another guy, Jeff, and then Joe, and um, some else. But this is Trinity's office, which, by the way, last time I was here, Kevin was here, and Kevin's gone. But look how awesome this office I know, is. I'm liking the office. Can you guys cool. see this? Check this out. You looking at it? Can you see it? Would you look at it? Would you look at it? <laughs> oh, look here. Keys. We got everything. Look at this. Well organized. This is beautiful. I love the hats Peter built. Very cool. Hats, Mac tools, everything. Yep. Thank you, Trinity. Thank you. We'll let you go. Thank right, you, Trinity. Yeah. You got a round of applause from the audience. Round of applause. Yeah. That was awesome. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Really good stuff. So, and she uh, takes Visa and MasterCard. Cowbell. She takes Visa and MasterCard, and- ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Well, oh, yeah. um,. Well, I don't know. How are we on time, Jay? Well, we're great. I mean, we're way over, but I, okay, so I will say this. Here's the information you're looking for. We're doing pretty good. I mean, we're at almost a hundred views, which is pretty good for a Cars on the Move. Um, You know, we've had some likes and some, you know, decent traffic, especially for ATI, Mm. because we don't say anything flashy. We didn't promise anybody would get rich. Oh, here's here we go. Here's hey buddy. What's going on? This is Kevin. Kevin's been here forever. Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years. Did you hear that? Twenty-five years. Thank you for your service. Pretty much hangs over there on that side, right? You get you get the pit. You do all the services. All the services. I look for things wrong. What's your pet peeve when a driver rolls in? Pet peeve. Pet peeve. What really upsets you when you see a truck pulling and? What's wrong with it? When they turn too sharp and turn too sharp, what happens when you turn too sharp? Oh, they get into the mud flap, bat wings, and mud flaps and bat wings. You guys know what mud flaps and bat wings are? Take it away, Here, mud flaps to... and bat wings. Never heard yeah, of that. This bat is wing. important. It's a, yeah, it's a Super really... Bowl snack. What the heck? <laughs> is it? No, watch this. Okay, Kevin, show us. This is a mud flap, right? That's a mud flap. You can see how bent this one is. Uh-oh. That's because the trailer gets into it. So what's this called? That's a bat wing. That's a bat wing. And they can hit these two and mess them up. If they yeah. turn too sharp. What happened? You're saying this? When you turn too, too sharp, sharp, it goes into that. It goes into that. And that's not cheap. And then the next thing is getting into the tire. You can actually turn that sharp. No way. You can get into the tire. Oh, man. If a driver did that, I would probably be upset too. There's various bat wings too, right? Look at this bat wing. Yep. That one looks different than that other one. Yep. No longer. Is this plus rubber? Oh, it's what is that? It's metal. That's metal. Yep. 
Oh, man. And it's not a step. How many guys step on that? Well, yeah. You're not supposed to. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. Those, and then the mud flaps. So you need the mud flaps and the back wings. Don't turn too sharp. When you have a truck pull in and you see that over there on the ground, that doesn't yeah. that doesn't. That's what I'm happen. doing is replacing that one over there. Let's go look at it. They, they turn too sharp. They turned too sharp and ripped it off, huh? Look at that, guys. <clears throat> this is where we get into, uh, like, see yeah. These? Go ahead. These marks right here. Ooh. The tire. No way. Yes. I've never done that. That's an, I didn't know you could do that. All the way up in the wow. What do you do to that guy? Do you have a little heart to heart with him? If you tell him not to turn that sharp, what happened? <laughs> I come back next time and do it again. Oh, no. You want to show us your pit? Because a pit's a really big deal. Can we see your pit? Come on, let's go look at your pit. This is cool. Not very many shops have a pit, just so you know. I don't know uh, if anybody knows that. Not uh, entirely true. I have a pit in my garage. Well, Ooh. you're special. Come on, man. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I do. I, I have, have one in my truck garage. Shop. That's awesome. I need your garage, Bruce. I believe it. I believe There's it. There's Jesse down there. Wow, look at that. Makes it a lot better. Hey, Jesse, what are you doing down there? <laughs> oh, come on. What did he say? He had no idea. To get underneath them and look at them. And... He's hiding. And that's, see that's a big on. deal to get underneath one of these things. I've always wanted to get underneath one. Yeah. That's cool. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Jess. Wow. Good to see you guys. Yeah, that yeah. was cool. That was neat. <clears throat> Mud flaps and yeah. bat wings. It's a really great shop. And, you know, I think what I'm going for here is if you're a new guy starting out with your one ton and your three car and you want to own your own business and you want to grow your business, this is something you could look forward to someday, right here, the shop. Does that make sense? Sure. You just slowly but surely. Randy, how many trucks did you start out with? One. There you go. Starts it's with always one. one. <laughs> so uh, But it is nice. Uh, you know, I was thinking on the way over here to do the show, I was thinking about how nice Randy's shop is and how awesome it is that they let us come over here and show equipment, talk about equipment. And uh, what do we got here? Hang on. Oh, I missed it. Anyway, uh, it's really nice on days like today where it's muddy out. I mean, I, I remember having, you know, three or four trucks building up to 20 and not having a place to work on and being out in the mud in the parking lot, trying to change a light, fix a wire, you know, do a chain, whatever it is, just easy stuff that I knew I was able to do. But I think one of the goals at some point, Carlos, would you ever want to have your own shop? It would be nice. <laughs> so I want to be outside in the weather. Yeah, right. Yeah, what's your shop right now? Uh, my driveway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I just put my stepson into his own shop now. He does diesel work now. So I'm, uh, I'm on my way. We start small two-bay place. We will go to something bigger. Well, I want to, I want to kind of end up along this line, which is uh, rates, car hauling rates. Now, uh, uh, Joe and Randy, I don't ever want to talk about rates with you guys. I just know you guys primarily focus on more OEM than used car. On the used car side, that's where we spend a lot of time talking about rates and talking about load boards and different things like that. But the, where I'm going with this is I'm not necessarily wanting to talk about the actual rate. I'm wanting you to see the amount of money that it costs to move a car. There's a tremendous amount of money right here, okay? And I, I'm not saying that like everybody's just rolling in money because that's not the case. The fuel, the insurance, the halo, I mean, these are all extras to try to help save money in order to continue to make money. Is that a fair way to say that, Joe? Yes. It's a big investment. deal. Big it's a big investment. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> the <Yeah>. carrier. <laughs> no, hey, Ty, good job. You're so smart. No. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, but no, it really is. And that's why, that's why you know, some of our Thursday shows, we, we do talk a lot about rates. We do talk about the used car in that world because I've got, my concern, and I'm, I'm not definitely not predicting anything, but I, I do have a sense. I notice, like, because of this show, used to, I get maybe two calls a day. And it's really been trimmed back. I mean, maybe one every other day. 
still get a lot of calls, but the reality of it is I'm wondering if there are less carriers, less people getting into this business. And so my concern would be for consigners, right? So we talk about used car, used car space, and I'm thinking these guys with the one tons and the three cars, if they're somehow figuring out, <clears throat> uh, maybe I should slow down before I get into this or maybe learn a little bit more, is there gonna, are they going to be able to get the cars moved? That's, that's where I'm going. There, it's a huge investment. Even on a small scale, one guy, one truck, it's still a big investment. Well, still costs a lot of money. Yeah, go ahead, Jay. This is where, well, you are, I mean, you're, you're hitting the central uh, issue, which is rates goes back into the ability to maintain equipment. Yeah. And so and so it goes. And it's gotten harder. We know that. Uh, you mean you add part <laughs> shortage. I mean, who's waiting on parts? Like everybody? Yeah, the world. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, exactly. So you add that problem mm. to the problems you've already got. I mean, and now, I mean, do you need higher rates to offset all of your parts problems? How does the shipper justify that? I need mm. the volume. I get a good rate. We that? just don't have, Jeff, I need the volume. We just, our, our volume coming out of the dealer Going into the auction was a normal Monday trip. That's dried up because they're using, keeping the cars on the lot. Um, the auction has a very, very poor quality of cars when they do have cars. It's fact. Um, mm. yeah, right when we run, when we run, we're getting a great rate, and we're not using the load board to do it. But like I said, you know, there's sometimes I'll sit where I used to run on Wednesday. I have to wait for them to get done buying. Mm. Well, like you know, I was in, yeah. Can you comment here, Ty, real quick? Yeah. One of the, one of the classic mistakes that I see in this business uh, over the years, uh, and I'm talking about um, companies of every size, uh, you know, smaller organizations, a couple of trucks to, you know, very large ones. One of the classic mistakes that I see uh, uh, all the time is the assumption that it's always going to be this way. You know, you get into a groove, you get a nice steady uh, amount of traffic going and you sit there and think, wow, it's going to go like this forever. It's never going to end. This is, <laughs> this is how this is how the business is always going to be. The next 30 years of my life are set as long as I keep on doing this thing and whatever. That is not car hauling. No, it's not. Extremely no. mercurial business. Lanes come, they go, they, they, they're yep. there one day, they dry up the next. Sometimes they come back. And sometimes they come back and because of something else that's changed in the marketplace, they don't come back at the same rate. And that can be pluses or minuses. Um, you know, this, this business is never the same, you know, any two days in a row. And if you were to take a look month to month to month to month, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a, in a constant state of evolution. And that's why some of us in this business are so attracted to it because, you know, it's, it's never the same. And, and that is an exciting thing. And we get this passion for it. And, you know, the next thing you know, we're all standing on YouTube chatting, chatting about tires and halos and, <laughs> and you know, and ties hairdo. But the thing is that <laughs> nice, but you know, the thing of it is that you cannot make that assumption in this business. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I, I talk a lot about, you know, what the rate structure and what the cost structure is in this business. Because if you don't understand what the cost of running your truck is when it's loaded, you're definitely going to have a problem understanding what the cost of your truck is when it's empty and sitting in one of these bays like behind Ty. That piece of equipment is an, is an immediately depreciating asset. It is a weapon to perform a particular task. It is a tool. And if you do not understand what it costs to be able to operate that thing, then you're, you know, and, and, and maintain it and what that downtime is going to look like, then it is very, very challenging for you to be able to set the rates that you need to be able to, to turn a dollar in this business day to day, week to week, month to month and year to year. Well said. That's, That's right. Said. Exactly. You got to know your numbers. If you don't know your Amen. numbers, you're going to crash and burn. Well, and that's what ATI is here for. If you you guys are seriously interested, anybody watching this show, if you're really interested in getting in or if you're in it and you need some help trying to navigate, figure things out, that's what ATI is here for. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of us that we all know somebody or we all know something and we're all here to make sure that you succeed. That's really what I'm after. 
I want everybody in this business to do it right and to do a good job. And I think that's what you might call success, maybe. It's hard to get people to listen to you, though. Yeah, it is. And I was thinking, I mean, I, my, I was thinking, I remember when I had my one ton, when I started my three-car trailer, I remember we were pulling up here, Kansas City, in the transport parking lot. There was always the same guys, and they would always come over, and they'd always tell me how stupid I am, like literally, to my face. And you're really stupid. And I'm like, oh, yeah, why? <coughs> That little truck, I, I've been here, and you've, I've watched you come back and forth, I don't know how many times, when you could just get a, one of these trucks, put all nine of them on, and go back and make a lot more money and be done. You're wearing yourself out. You're wearing your truck out. I'm like, golly, you're stupid. Well, <laughs> until I figured it out, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, these guys are right. And two, you know, I thought of this this morning. I Just so everybody knows, these things are scary. Right? I didn't want to get in a semi. There's a reason why. That's huge. There's a lot of liability there. Me and my little truck, my three cars, I can kind of manage that. A big semi that I don't even know how to drive with nine on it? Why Why are you talking to me? Right? But as you grow, as you grow your business, I, if you do it right, you're going to need one of these. <laughs> because you're going to be developing relationships with clients, customers that are going to tell their friend who they use. And they're going to tell their friend who they use. The next thing you know... I can't haul three. I got 30 sitting back there. I got to hurry up and move more at one time. Is that right? No, it's, not just, it's not just clients and OEMs, but it's people who fix, who maintain your equipment, people who fix your equipment. You can't do it all by yourself. There will eventually be something that you got to call someone and say, hey, I need this thing done, you know, whatever it is. So, you know, relate. I say this is a relationship business and that's at every level. I'm using a, a a former employer to to do our clutch job on our truck because the the regular shop we used was three weeks out. Yep. And he's taking his road mechanic that usually does road service work. He's capable of doing it, but it's a small town and it's the first big job like that that he's done. But it's because of a relationship. We both trust each other, and. I have faith that they're going to get it done tonight in case I do have to go east. But looking at the snow coming down outside, I think I'll wait till tomorrow morning. <laughs> my boss has a saying because I begged for a, a five car or a three car to do my local work because I'm getting a little old of climbing up and doing the nine cars. You can always haul three on a nine car, but you can't haul nine on a three car. So that's why he keeps me running the stinger. <laughs> Good point. Uh, great show great great thing today guys i appreciate it um thank you very much jeff for I, joining us. i yeah. i lay in the bunk some nights at the auction watching the old shows to catch up of what i've missed and oh wow it's wow uh, what well that you're so you're gonna join us thursday right on dispatch i you get the chance i wanna I, I would love more feedback like what you just said uh and because that's what we want we want people to tell us what do you want more of, right? Because there is so much to talk about. It's, um, the technology is the biggest thing, and the, and the trust issue. I think my mm -hmm. boss is a as a as a one truck guy. He does post stuff on the big board, but as far as using like somebody's app to integrate with his oh. bills of lading and stuff, he doesn't trust them because he's had the big auction house already track down his customers and knock on the door and offer to do it at a substantially mm. lower cost. So he, mm. he shockingly keeps his, his wagon circled to, to, and keeps his customer base, you know, that way. It's, now, is right. it the right there way to do business? Feedback. Is it the right way to do business in today's mm -hmm. day and age? Or is, but he, he's doing it and well, he's still doing it. So uh, okay. that's the thing that he's successfully doing it that way. We know a lot of companies that will find a carrier using a load board, but then take the transaction off of the load board to try to minimize exposure of client data. Right. And that is, that's a real thing. It has been Welcome for a while. to the yeah. car hauling jungle. Yeah, exactly. It gets, uh, the poach city. the business, period. Yeah. If somebody yeah. can steal yeah. it, they'll steal it. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, so-called friends that are in the business that have been at the truck show with you, um, that that you've barbecued and, right. and 
drank beer with have gone yeah. in and cut your loads by a hundred dollars a car. Mm. <laughs> well, so, we're gonna try to change that. And we that's why we're here is because uh really we do uh wanna all try to get along as best we can. I think we're gonna all need each other too at some point. We are so we are anyway. networking strong. Uh, you just yeah. got to add in there, Randy. Jeff. That was that was really well said, and and that's a lot of what goes on out there today. A lot of people don't they they don't trust each other in the business anymore because of that. You know, large companies own some of the apps that are out there, and who knows if they're mining your data or not? Oh, Very well I said. Guarantee they are. Yeah. Guaranteed. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I they're would. collecting it. They're collecting. <laughs> it. How else are they figuring these these instant instant auto quote rates? Because they're monitoring everything and putting it together, and they've got the algorithms to price it with fuel. And then, you know, I, I, it's interesting watching the car haul business turn into the freight business. Oh, you know, that's the, bad. I wish you wouldn't have said that out loud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> oh, come on, Whoa, man. You left that one here. <laughs> Randy's, been, Randy's been in it long enough. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. We are hauling. If, if everything had, had adjusted for the price of inflation and everything, We'd be hauling twelve dollar a mile cars, twenty dollar a mile cars. We're not. Yeah. Wow. All right, guys. I think we've talked about it. I know this is shipper like what? Whoa. <laughs> I know eggs went up, but cars? Um, listen, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Um and yeah, yeah please do leave feedback. Please like and share. Please comment, um, tell your friends, and uh, let us know how oh, we Oh, Randy can, and yeah, Joe, we, thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, Randy Mid and Joe Western. and Midwestern Car Carriers and Trinity and, uh, man, everybody on Kevin the shop floor. Jess. Thank you so much. Uh, Good luck, also, Good luck, um, Nick. Oh, thank oh, you. We lost Ty. That never happens. He never leaves early. Well, <laughs> he does on Tuesday nights. He doesn't be to fall off the trailer. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. He's down in he the He got hole. too excited. He fell in the pit. <laughs> fell in the pit. <laughs> he signed the waiver. Remember, he signed the waiver. Oh, yeah. So we oh, should good. be good. <laughs> <laughs> I got to warn my wife about the pit, you know, just in case. Right, exactly. Just remember, I have Probably that. in Trinity's office. <laughs> He's in Trinity's office getting wood shedded. Um, all right. Well, listen, gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, we're just going to wrap up the show here and then we'll see you again soon. Hey, and don't forget Tuesday night. We just heard Jeff, you said technology Tuesday night. We have ship dot cars. They're going to show us more about their technology and we are looking forward to learning more about everybody's technology in the coming days. I mean, there's a lot of mobile apps, load boards, etc. So there's a lot to know. So please do join us for that. All right. I'll put the link in the live chat here in a second. All right, gentlemen. Um, I don't know where Ty went. Maybe he'll be back, but uh, we will see you on the next one. Okay. See you guys. Thanks for being Thank you so much. Thank nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Another great show. Day. That was weekend. awesome. Yeah, that you was too. a great show. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Take care. All right. Stay see safe. you on the next one. Stay warm. Uh, oh, and I haven't created the link yet for, so I'll do this, put in the waiting room, put in the waiting room. Hey, Joe, any final thoughts before we let you go? I, I feel like a broken record when I say it's a relationship-based business and, you know, there's so many moving pieces and, you know, you, you can't do it alone. You know, it takes, it takes a matter of all kinds. It takes a tribe to build a, to, you know, to, to build a company. I want to say this, um, and thank you for that. Is that uh, I thought it was really neat some of the uh, some of the minutia mm -hmm. of like when Ty was up on the trailer. Thank goodness it was Ty because he knows what you're going to talk about, and so he knows the trailer. Mm -hmm. um, and like you're, you know, we're learning more about the pockets and the the flaps or flippers, and I mean that was neat. I see opportunity. Um, I don't exactly know in what way, but make some notes and think about what we didn't cover and that we can cover and maybe some basics of, I don't know. Yeah. My feedback for you guys is that was really cool and we didn't even have a script. Right. <laughs> right. So Bullet what if we would, would be good? Well, then, yeah. The, what if the we did some planning to cooperate for the next a little one? bit so we can, you know, yeah. spend a little bit more time moving around. 
So, but I mean, that was really awesome. And hopefully there's some useful clips in this show. I'll be going in and putting in description with time codes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, let's learn what we want to see more of next time, whenever that is. So that was really cool. I mean, I'm really happy with today's show. Great. So, Good to be on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Thanks again, Randy. Take care, Joe. We'll see you at a Habaneros in the future. <laughs> All right. I'm going to end the meeting. Take care. And that's a cut. All right, cool. And we're back to camera one, and we're in the live chat. Everybody, thank you so much for jumping in the live chat and saying hello. That was really cool. That was a long Cars on the Move. Wow. That was an hour and 45 minutes. Maybe the longest Cars on the Move we've done, but that would make sense. It's a it's an equipment show, and, and equipment takes time. There's a lot to see. There's a lot to learn. And, um, yeah, I look forward to having an even bigger and better one next quarter. So we'll do this. Maybe we'll try to do this quarterly. Thanks everybody so much for jumping in. Um, I got I got some work to do here this afternoon, but there is a show Tuesday night with Ship Cars. We're going to learn more about Loadmate Pro. There's going to be a tech demo. You're going to be able to ask questions. We're bringing in the team, so this is going to be a great show. Please do join us Tuesday night. Always on ATI Auto Business. My name is Jay. Please let us know how we can help. I hope you have a good weekend and uh, get some work done. Try to enjoy yourself a little bit. Of course, it's a community. It's a resource. ATI Auto Business is here for you as well. So let us know how we're doing. Thank you so much. Take care. We'll see you soon. Peace out.